and serve my God. Amen. Hallelujah. I serve a God. And not only do you think big, big in the Lord of Lords, but he a part of you. Come on. Somebody give God a praise in the heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. We praise God today. God is a good God, and we are just just feeling filled and being filled all over again yes, as we sit in the worship of the Lord. Yes, sir. I don't know about nobody else, but my cup is running over for what the Lord yeah. is doing in this place Thank today. You, amen, amen. Even can I tell you? Sometimes even sitting on the pulpit, pastor is getting attacked from all sides. I know that. Right. I serve a risen Savior. Amen. As soon as the attack came, I can tell you, the attack came this morning. Amen. And as soon as the attack came, God dispatched angels from heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. And they came around about me. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you what happened. And they came around about me, and they would not let me fall, neither let my foot dash against the stone. That's exactly how I feel. I feel protected in the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. Good, uh, good, uh, I don't know what might come out my mouth this morning, but God, God is good, and yes, mercy is good, yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, how many of y'all ready for a word today? Amen, amen. 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 I'm going to tell time people to be mindful, y'all got me up at 8 minutes after right, 9 minutes after 12, alright? Don't expect me to be done at 12.25, amen, right. amen, amen. 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 How many of y'all do that every word? Say it again for me. Amen. 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 I invite you to turn your attention to the book of Malachi. Amen. I've been on vacation, but I ain't done. Amen. Amen. Somebody might be wondering why the pastor preaching from Malachi. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you, it ain't but one good reason to preach from Malachi. It's the same reason when you preach any other word that's in this Bible. It's because it calls the people to be persuaded to walk in obedience to the word of Almighty God. That's the only reason. Amen. So let that be clarity in the house. Amen. Don't let nobody go home and try to wonder and fix up why Pastor is preaching from Malachi. You ain't got to ask nobody. I just told you. Amen. Malachi, look with me at verse 10. Amen. We're going to read on down about verse 18. Amen. When you found it, please say amen. Malachi 3. Amen. Starting at verse 10. Reading down to verse 18. Amen. And the Bible said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, you will say of the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord, yet ye say, What have we spoken so much against thee? Ye, ye have said, It is vain to serve the Lord. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance? And that we have walked mournfully uh, before the Lord uh, of hosts. Uh, uh, verse 15. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, that they work, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, that that tempt God uh, are even delivered. Uh, then they that fear the Lord uh, spoke and spake. Offered one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feel the Lord and that thought upon his name, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth not. Amen. Amen. And may the 
Lord up and add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Uh, let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, uh, uh, for being behind your sacred desk. Uh, being behind this desk means uh, no more I, but only you, God. Uh, and so we pray, God, uh, that as you, are, as you send the anointing to preach, uh, that you send that anointing to shrink me back uh, and let the Lord and the Spirit of God rise up in me. Uh, that as you send the anointing, uh, that will make preaching easy. Uh, that you send the anointing, uh, that will make hearing your word easy. Uh, and you send the anointing, uh, that will make doing your word real easy. Amen. And now, God, as you dip it down into the well of anointing, uh, that we might preach a word from on high. But God, we ask you, God, uh, to partner with us in the covering of your covenant, God. Uh, cover us with the precious blood of Jesus, uh, that the devil uh, knows who we are uh, and who not are us with. Uh, in Jesus' name, we do pray. Uh, and let the church say, Amen. 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 Today, for our time together in the Word of God, uh, I want to preach on this fourth installment uh, of the sermon series. You got to get this. Amen. Uh, I hope and pray this sermon series uh, has been informative and uplifting to you, uh, as well as empowering you uh, through the blessings of hearing uh, and understanding God's Word. Amen. Uh, thus, allowing all of us uh, to connect with God in the fullness of uh, of his covenant relationship. Uh, church, can I tell you God's covenant with his people simply stated uh, are God's promises uh, to his people uh, for obeying his word. Uh, it's what God will do uh, and what you are expected to do. Amen. Uh, God's covenant with us includes uh, what he will provide and what he will allow. Uh, what he won't allow to happen uh, and how God will protect you uh, and deliver. Amen. Uh, it also includes how God will save, prosper, and keep his people uh, that are called by his name uh, and live in accordance uh, to his word. Uh, can I tell you today that there are two principal uh, components uh, of the covenant of God uh, uh, with us, uh, and they are love, uh, and they are giving. Amen. Uh -huh. uh, the loving part, uh, uh, that is being loved by God, uh, we normally, we get that. Amen. Even to the part of where we love God. Amen. We get that to a great extent too. And we do need to understand a little better that part of our loving God is obeying Him completely. But for the most part, we get it. Amen. Because you know, we all crave just a little more love. Amen. Yes. So loving comes a bit easier. Amen. To all of us. We may still need to work at it a little bit, but we get it. Amen. But when it comes to giving, amen, um, giving goes uh, goes just a bit against our own natural nature, amen. It goes against our nature to be givers, amen. Uh, we are born with a sinful nature, amen. And that sinful nature has some of its roots in selfishness. Now, I can't really mess with that uh, right now today, but I will get to it somewhere, amen. But that's a whole nother sermon series. But I will say in this uh, selfishness uh, does not promote giving. Amen. Amen. And giving is uh, a great big old part uh, of who God truly is. Amen. Uh, John 3.16 uh, lets us know that because God so loved, he gave. Amen. I know that's right. Witness right there. Uh, yeah. See, yeah. so for that reason, amen, uh, we have been teaching on an aspect of giving uh, that is tithing. Amen. Uh, and then notice I did say an aspect of giving uh, because tithing, huh? Yes, I'm about to say it. Tithing is not the only form of giving. Huh? But I tell you, huh? it is a start. Huh? Giving in the Bible includes offerings. Mm -hmm. uh, it also includes alms. Huh? That is given to the needy out of, out of uh, compassion. Huh? Uh, it, uh, it also includes 
sowing a seed or giving as an act of faith. And then there's another offering called the first fruit, amen, which is not to be confused with tithing, amen. When you say that they're giving to the needy, the first fruit offering and the sowing of the seed by faith offering, and even to a great extent, the general offerings, they all can be can be taken to another level by a category of giving called sacrificial offering. Amen. Amen. However, watch this. However, the, the tithe, the tithe of your increase, the 10% of your increase to be given unto God is never to ever be considered a sacrifice. It cannot be a sacrifice because that's what you're supposed to do. Amen. Amen. Can I get a witness right there? Amen. It is your duty to be obedient and to give God what he asks for of your increase. Amen. Oh God, help me preach this thing. See, for us, our giving to God is the foundation of our giving house, if, if you will. Once we have learned to tithe unto God and give an offering, we can build upon our giving and add other layers to our building. But first, we must do the first works first. Amen. And can create a foundation on the word of God according to his, his mandate about giving. And that's what T-I-T-H-E. Amen. It is the tithe. Amen. Can I still get a witness? Amen. Amen. See, this series started uh, on which from commonly asked questions about tithing uh, and explaining what is meant uh, in Malachi 3 uh, in relationship to those questions uh, uh, amen uh, in parts 1 and 2 uh, of this series. Uh, you know, you remember we asked questions like uh, what is a tithe? Uh, where to tithe? Uh, why why tithe? Uh, why does the oh, well, excuse me, who does the tithe really bless? Uh, you or oh God? Uh, should I tithe from the gross uh, or from the net amount of my increase uh, and so on and so on. Uh, and then in the third part of this series uh, we started talking about the benefits of tithing. Uh, and here are some of the benefits uh, of tithing that we talked about two weeks ago. Uh, one, uh, the ability to prove or test God. Can I tell you, uh, when we tithe uh, we get the ability to put God on the spot uh, to see if he will perform uh, just like he said he would. Uh, two, uh, from tithing uh, we learn order and good financial planning. We learn budgeting. Amen. We learn before God will bless us and our finances. We got to create some order. God don't bless mess. Amen. And God ain't going to bless your mess with more for you to mess it up. Amen. I'm just saying. And then the third thing we learned. Uh, then we learned the third benefit of tithing was this. We learned that tithing up your 10% invites God in to all your business, amen. Uh, and he will bless everything you got, uh, everything. He will bring the whole of your increase uh, under his umbrella I just know, because God. you gave him 10%. Oh, God. That ought to make you shout right there. Uh, you can't go nowhere. I can't go to Mr. Martin's. Uh, I can't go to Mr. Kroger and say, I'm about all this food, but I'm going to give you 10%. And you take care of the rest. You can't do that with him. But if I go to God and say, God, I'm going to give you my 10%, will you bless my 90? God, they show you right. Come on, somebody. Oh, good God. Now, look, look, look. Oh, I feel good. I told you I feel good. So let me preach that. I feel good. Look, 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 look. Now, I'm not going to re preach what I've already preached. Uh, but see, these are available if you don't have the internet access. Amen. Uh, and these messages are worth, re are, are worth hearing again, uh, which brings me to today's word. Uh, I want to continue with the benefits of tithing uh, as we get deeper into uh, the I wills uh, of God. Uh, Found in Malachi 3. So that sometimes folk don't read Malachi far enough to know, understand right? God got some responsibility here. Oh God, I'm preaching about covenant right Come now. On, and when you're preaching about covenant, 
right. It's always, uh, oh God, I wish I, could, I wish I could talk like a lawyer. Amen. Because you know a lawyer is in the party of the first part. Uh, if he don't buy the holy to the party of the second part, uh, and he will from now on and forever do kill peace uh, on this on this 26 on this 26th day uh, of the year of our Lord, 2015. You know how lawyers talk about uh, But there's a contract involved in this thing. Uh, and if God has ever asked you to do something, it's only because he asked you to do because when you do, he will. Come on. On the first I will and Malachi 10. It says, God is talking about to bring ye all the times into the storehouse that there shall be meat in thine house and prove me now. He will say of the Lord of hosts, if I will, come on, you see it, not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Again, I'm not going to preach, re preach what I've already preached, but I want you to see this church. All God is talking directly to you. If you find the word, if you abide in my covenant, I, I will. God said, I will I over to right. you. That's you, 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 yeah, you, yeah. you, yeah. the women of heaven. Yeah. And I will pour you. That's you, 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 and you. Yeah. All the blessing that you, that's you, 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 and you will not have room enough uh, to receive. Do you hear the Lord yeah, uh, talking to you, 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 and you? Uh, I don't know I don't about know, you, yeah. uh, but the Lord is speaking uh, my language right here. Uh, amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are ready to receive. Uh, are we ready to receive yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of talk uh, yeah. when the Lord begin to speak? Uh, oh, your language. Uh, yeah. When the Lord put it right where you can get it. Amen. When the Lord bring it down uh, to your level. Uh, when the Lord show to you uh, how strong and mighty he is. Yeah, yeah. When the Lord said, uh, I am no God. I have told me there is no way. Yeah. Uh, when the Lord put it uh, right in your face. Uh, when the Lord make it plain to you. Uh, are you ready? To receive yeah. that kind of word yeah. from the Lord. Yeah. I want you to understand. I want you to understand this. Watch this, y'all. You got to hear. You got to understand. Look, when I tell you this, and, and, and I'm getting close. Look, let me tell you. When God began to speak a language, God began to speak, first of all, God spoke in love to all people. Yes. See, for God is love. Uh, for God so loved the world. Uh, God is a loving and merciful God uh, that He allowed it to rain uh, yes. on the just uh, mm -hmm, and the unjust all at the same time. Uh, but when God wants to get intimate with you, amen. Uh, when God wants to get intimate uh, with His people, uh, God begins to speak uh, in a language that is only translated uh, in His covenant. And church with these I wills. God is beginning to speak coming to you. You want to you men know, huh? you marry me, you better know huh? how sometimes huh? you just going to whisper some sweet in your right ear. Huh? Amen. We just going to say, woo, huh? you know I love you. Boo, huh? you know you're my girl. Huh? Took my wife off for a little bite to eat last night. Huh? And I hashtag that thing. Huh? I love me some Cora. And you know why? Huh? Cause I know my wife. Huh? And I recognize that every now and then huh? I got to huh, say something sweet to her. Huh? Oh, huh? Then we can stay in agreement. The Bible says, how can two walk together uh, unless they agree? Amen. Hey. Where every now and then, uh, oh, when the Lord is going to whisper something sweet in your ear, uh, God will whisper one in your hey. uh, God said, You know, I never forsake you. Uh, you hey. know, I never leave you. Uh, God said, uh, By my stripes, you are healed. Uh, God said, I am no shepherd, uh, and you shall not be. Uh, God can get the whisper to come in your ear. Uh, how do you want to get down with the Lord like that? Let the Lord whisper something sweet in your ear. See, right now, talking about tithing, God is whispering covenant in your ear. God begin to whisper the I wills, amen. I tell you, look, I want you to understand this. We talked about this a little bit last week. We talked about the windows of heaven. 
do you open the floodgates of heaven? Huh? Then I tell you, you huh? there are no floodgates of heaven. Huh? There are no floodgates, no windows of heaven to be opened up huh? and poured out of blessings huh? that you don't have room enough to receive huh? unless you're walking in the covenant. I know that's right. And if you're not tithing, huh? you can't completely walk in the covenant. Huh? You can walk in part of the covenant. You can walk in the part of the covenant where God loves you. Amen. I know that's right. But I'm about to show you some, 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 some special arrangement that God has made for them that love him huh, and walk according to all his purpose. Yes, Amen. Yes, oh God, can I show you? Can I show you the man? If I show you the either I will uh, or for covenant people. Uh, this I will uh, and the other to follow uh, or for the tithers. Uh, see, we covered uh, uh, most of uh, verse 10 and part 3. Uh, but let me hit you up uh, with some more other I wills. Uh, but I want you to get this. Uh, I want you to see this. Uh, and I want you to know this about Malachi and tithing. Uh, not only will God provide and promote uh, your blessings through uh, this covenant of giving, uh, but God will also protect uh, and perpetuate uh, the continuance uh, of your blessings uh, through his covenant of giving. Come on, uh, somebody, uh, look at this text, amen. Uh, uh, look at the text uh, that I will, that God will perform, uh, uh, amen. Uh, if you give him all the tithes, uh, that is due him. Uh, right there in verse 11a, uh, let me just that topic is saying this uh, the Lord is saying uh, I will keep the enemy off you uh, you, and off your stuff look at verse 11a uh, and he says I will uh, rebuke the devourer uh, for your sakes uh, and he shall not destroy uh, the fruits of your ground Uh, now look uh, in this time the reference uh, that God is saying here was to their crops uh, as it was they raised or farmed but not that the increase was and the devourer in the natural was a pest and man and animals that would come along and either eat or spoil their crops and then there were other parasites that would latch on to their cattle and make their animals sick now the devil would be taken away from their increase I know most of us don't raise any animals amen and a few of us and none of us amen farm amen but we do have increase amen we do have money that come in uh, from our jobs or from our several other um, um, things that bring us money and funds. Uh, uh, and we need the Lord. Uh, do you need the oh, Lord to protect right. what you cut in, man? Amen. 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 And they just take us out for no reason. Uh, the things are failing and things are not going right. Greece is over there acting up, messing up the whole world's economy. Amen. I need to. I can't take all that out, huh? but I give my 10%, amen, I and I let the right. Lord worry about the rest, amen. 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 The Lord said he'll be you, man. I did power, amen. Uh, the Bible says uh, uh, in First Peter, amen, uh, uh, 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, uh, because your adversary, the devil, uh, is like a roaring lion walking about, uh, seeking whom he may devour. The church, can I tell you, uh, the devil will use anything uh, to get at your soul uh, and attacking you, uh, and even what you have uh, is not out of bounds for the devil. Uh, but when you tithe, uh, the Lord said, I'll bring everything you Good uh, under my own right. brother, amen. Uh, you. I bring your money and your money uh, underneath you me. I bring your truth, uh, I bring your good. Uh, I'll bring everything underneath my own brother, uh, and I'll be good to devour. Uh, can I tell you the devil uh, will use anything at his disposal uh, to accomplish uh, your demise uh, and to devour what you've got? Uh, but when your goods and your increase are covered uh, under the covenant of uh, uh, the devil, is a uh, liar. Uh, and the devil is yes, yes. Uh, put in check. Uh, and yes, I tell you, yes. God uh, will protect your increase uh, in every way imaginable. Uh, because the devourer, uh, they will attack you, uh, your increase uh, in every way imaginable. Uh, your increase uh, may even have to be protected from you. Amen. Uh, sometimes we have a weakness, uh, even in our flesh, uh, that we just can't seem to get over. Uh, but when you walk in covenant with God, uh, God. I see uh, and take inventory over your weakness. 
because I'm here and put in a ton of words. I remember he began to show you some spiritual things that will help you overcome. I know I ought not be talking about nobody in particular places, but no, I ain't gonna talk about it because God has already put you in check right now. Some of y'all got devices, some of y'all got vices, and things and hang ups that you like to do in your secret closet other than to pray. Amen. Maybe nobody don't know about them lottery tickets you just bought, them cigarettes in your pocket, that liquor in your back room. Amen. Maybe I don't know, but God knows. Nobody don't know about that woman you run around with. Maybe that man you sleeping with. Maybe I don't know, but God knows. God will tell you just to be showing your soul. If you tired, God will put all that in check. Come on, boy. You better be here. from her, even repair calls. I ain't saying you'll never have to get nothing repaired, but I know my God will do this. God will take them brick stones on your car. On, it was supposed to go 80,000 to 100,000 miles Come and on, make those things last 150,000. See, that's God protecting your enemies. I ain't saying you won't ever get sick, but God will keep you from catching that extra cold. But you don't get down with the flu. And then the flu turned into bronchitis. And the bronchitis turned into pneumonia. And keep you out of the doctor. And then pay them 30, 40, 50 on a copay. Just to tell you to drink plenty of fluid and get some rest. God will keep that. Amen. Let me tell you the last one. Say how good God is. God ain't have no money. We got an ace back in our house that was opposed to that. The ammunition that he didn't sell. Amen. 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 Amen.
The devil looked in your future. The devil looked in your future right now and see promises of God. I know. He see the dreams of God. Oh, God is you. Oh, the devil can see that much. Yeah. And the devil will come against you. Yeah. Even yeah. before time. Yeah. Oh, to try to make your fruit yeah. to the stuff before it's time. Yeah. And look, when fruit is, is detached from the vine, when it's pulled off the tree, before time, guess what? The growth of the other fruit stopped. Stop. Yes. Yeah. That the devil came to your yes. dream mm. before God has brought it to fruition. Mm. Your dream stops. The mm. hope stops. Your mm. healing stops. The mm. promise stops. Because you have got detached from the vine. Yeah. But God said, if you die, yeah. I won't let the tree Ooh. or the vine cast their fruit before time. You better get this. The God that is the keeper of your covenant is also the Lord of the harvest. That means that our harvest, natural and spiritual, all men, they belong to God. God is saying, God is saying, I have put this fruit and this fruitfulness in you. And I will not allow the enemy to subvert my timing. Come on. Sometimes we want our time and our timing to be God's time. But in the Bible, it says in Galatians, for her and the set time, which is said in the in the new era. New International Version, huh? that means the fullness of time. Ah, huh? oh, it's when God moves. God moves in the fullness of time huh? and not before. Huh? Sometimes we want God's season huh? to line up with what we think is our season. Huh? But don't you know huh? that God's season huh? is always due season? Huh? And Galatians 6 and 9 says, huh? and we shall weep huh? in due season huh? if we faint not. Huh? When you who are tired, huh? you you cause uh, your fruit uh, to stay on the vine uh, until God's time. Uh, God is saying uh, that I will let it ripen on the vine. Uh, I won't let it be cast down. Uh, and when the end is come, uh, Jesus Smith can tell you, uh, when the past come to fruition, uh, the square of mighty sweet in the uh, the past are mighty sweet. Uh, so can I tell you, uh, when your dream, your hope, your healing, uh, or anything that God has put in you, uh, when it comes to fruition, uh, you gonna say he's sweet. I know. Strong cows may have a strong wind may blow, but he's sweet. I know. And don't you know? You gonna be good for the ministry. You are gonna be good for your healing. You are gonna be good for your dream. You are gonna be good for the promises. But not only is God sweet, but you gonna be sweet too. Come on, somebody. You gotta understand, Amen. You gotta look. You gotta understand. Understand, God going to get every drop out of you uh, that He put in you. Uh. Look, you're a witness of God. Uh. Elijah, uh, Elijah uh, told Elijah uh, that if you see me going up, uh, you can have a double portion. Uh. That was the promise uh, that God had given him. Uh. You can have a double portion of of my anointing. Uh. And Elijah held on to the promise, uh, and he even saw Elijah uh, go up, uh, and the Lord uh, let Elijah. Uh, Leave the earth, how to perform 14 miracles. But can I tell you, in the fullness of time, it came a place where Elijah, the one who held on to the promise, he died. But when he died, the Bible let me know that he only had performed 27 recorded miracles. For those of you that are math majors in the house, you already done figured up that he needed 28 to be able to double. The, the, the miracles that Elijah did. But God said, I gave you a promise, and if you die in the vine, I won't let the promise die. Some of y'all got promises, and you might not see them come to fruition, but God said, in your children, they shall come to pass. I might not have gave it to you, but I gave it because of you. But look, before you start clapping, I ain't finished. Because the Lord did allow Elisha to die. And when he died, he died on 27. And that came a day. That was a battle. And did near the place where Elisha.
Elisha was buried. He was buried in a cave. And the battle was hot. And the battle was heavy. And soldiers was falling left and right. They didn't have time to bury their comrades with a proper burial. So you know what they did? They took one of the comrades and just threw him in the cave where the bones of Elisha was. But you know what happened? When that man dead body hit the anointed bones of Elisha, he rose again. He was resurrected. And for everybody that's counting, that was number 28. Amen. I tell you, God won't let you down the vine. But God will perform and get out of you everything. Anybody got a promise? You got a promise? You need some insurance on that promise. There ain't no insurance on a promise like God's word. Oh, God. There ain't no insurance on a promise like what God said it should be. And God said, if you tithe, I won't let your fruit cast this up before your time. Somebody say it with me. I will. I will. Next thing I'm going to tell you is this. Uh, verse 12. Uh, God promises I will bestow your good name in me. Uh, verse 12 said, uh, And all nations shall call you blessed, uh, but you shall be a delightsome land, uh, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh, oh, if you tithe, uh, I will uh, restore you. Uh, the people of God, can I tell you, uh, were meant to be a blessed people. Uh, not a people in bondage, not a people in lack, uh, not a people uh, of trouble. Uh, the covenant of God was made with them uh, to prevent all this from being and from coming to pass. Uh, it was a covenant that God made with Abraham uh, that was passed down through Isaac uh, and then through Jacob uh, and that, was, uh, that brought forth the deliverance uh, of the children of Israel from Egypt. Uh, that covenant took them through the wilderness uh, and brought them into a promised land, a good land, uh, a land flowing uh, with milk and honey. Uh, but now through disobedience, uh, what was once an abundance and a bounty uh, oh, a blessing, amen it, it had turned into hardship and famine uh, and it called other nations uh, to mock the people of God uh, as they had broken God's covenant uh, and seemingly God uh, had turned his back on them forever uh, but the Bible says uh, you know I like to say that uh, but the Bible says uh, second, oh I said one more time but the Bible says uh, and second part of the 7 and 14 uh, that if my People that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray yes, yes, yes. and seek my faith and turn yes, from their wicked yes, ways. Yes. Then I will heal from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Church, if you want God to restore you with what He has for you, you better get back in covenant with Him. This is an ideal for God that those that, that will tithe, God said, I will restore you. See, people of God, we you're in covenant with God. Restoration is coming. Huh? The world that would mock you in your calamity uh, will have to look on you and declare uh, that you are blessed of the Lord uh, and you are highly favored. Uh. Oh, come on, somebody. Do you know that tithing, uh, tithing the 10%, uh, it makes a difference, uh, children of God. Uh, I got to get ready to go now. Amen. Uh, but I got to leave you with this uh, uh, from Malachi 3. Because uh, I didn't pay you the benefits, uh, but there there's one more benefit, but I tell you, uh, uh, before you get through the benefit, uh, this last benefit, uh, you got some hills to climb, uh, you got some mountains to deal with. Uh, can I tell you, uh, in this text, amen, uh, the Bible in Malachi 3, uh, it, it, it gives you a warning, huh? and that is a part of the scripture huh, from verses 13 to 15, and I won't read it, I read it one time. Huh? From 13 to 15, it began to talk about those that are arrogant against this word. There are some folk that are sitting in your midst that will walk along the path you walk. And they are arrogant against this word. They try to subvert what God is saying and what God is doing. They're walking around like they ain't doing nothing, but they're throwing stones and they throwing rocks and they hammering the people of God. They act like they fold this, but they ain't about this life. But you about that? You ain't about this life. Amen. There's too many folks that acting like her and they know they're not serving the Lord and the fullness of this covenant and they don't want you to do it either. They even tell you, oh, look at me. I ain't tired. And the Lord is 
still blessed in me. Look at me, I'm happy. It ain't right there in the world. Look at me, I'm doing what I want to do. But the Lord promised from the Lord. I know that's right. I tell you, the Lord, they never promised us. He promised us that all of them uh, that think they get in the way uh, because they won't do, uh, they yes. think they can get the our wills of God, uh, doing what they want to do. I got a word for you uh, right from Malachi. Uh, and it ain't will a man rob God. No, it ain't that. Uh, because will a man rob God uh, was to bring your enlightenment. Maybe right. you didn't know you was robbing God. Uh, but now that God has explained, look what God has done. God has explained it all in this text. Yes. Uh, he has shown it all I in this text. Uh, he has shown what to do, how to do it, when to do it, why to do it. And then he even began to show you what blessings that will come. In Malachi's very book, no, Malachi is a blessed book because Malachi is going to put you on the path to being obedient to God and one of the principles of his covenant and that he did it. But God is saying, be ready. So that's the earth of folk. They don't want you to obey me. You got to traverse that. You got to get over that. You can't let nobody stop you, block you up, get in your way. Move on. Move. No, you got to sit beside you no more. Amen. Move your seat if you got to. When the hour of time comes, and you got your arms over there, look at you stand away, you got to pray to the Lord and put your tithe in. Amen. Hallelujah. This ain't a sometime thing, or I might can do it then. This is your reasonable service. But boy, for your reasonable service, you sure don't get a whole lot of benefits. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The Lord said that's the earth of folk. Yes. But can I tell you what God said? There will be a book of remembrance. He said it. He said it right there in his word. There shall be a book of, of remembrance in 16. And in that book of remembrance, guess what? There's going to be written a word. There's going to be a word written that will cause God to recognize you and remember you and understand that you have been set apart as a giver unto the covenant. God going to recognize you. I don't care if everybody sitting on your road look just like you. Amen. God said I'll be able to pick you up from the crowd because I will I will recognize you come on can I tell you that's coming a day of judgment when folk that are sliding by won't be able to slide by no more the only way you'll be able to slide is when you go into the electric slide but God said you won't slide up through here no more I'm going to bring a day of numbers but you say come will you remember me I'll tell you exactly that and yeah, I'm going to take my time and finish this. Amen. Look, uh, the Lord said, uh, you got a hiding place. Uh, you got a hiding place. Uh, how many old saints do I got to be here? Remember that song? Uh, In the word of God, uh, you got a hiding place. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, uh, your hiding place uh, is in the word of God. Because you have a covering. Uh, it is by the word uh, that your covenant with God is, is guaranteed. Uh, it makes no difference. Uh, who believes in what you believe. Uh, you got a word of covenant uh, that is covering you. Uh, how many of you know uh, that God loved the word? Uh, he said not, not one jot or uh, one tittle of my word shall pass away. Uh, how many of you know that the Lord said uh, that my word uh, will not return uh, unto me boys? Uh, how many of y'all know uh, that in the beginning was the word? Uh, and the word was with God. Uh, and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the word. And the word. And the word was made flesh. And he dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. If you don't know that word is Jesus, it was a word that was born of a virgin, Jesus. It was a, it was a word that was wrapped in swaddling clothes, and his name is Jesus. It was a word that was laid in the manger, and his name is Jesus. It was a word that was the only beloved, the only begotten Son of the Most High God. It was the word that was the light of the covenant to all men shining 
where they might see the glory of the Father and magnify his name. It was a word that healed the sick and raised the dead. It was a word that went to the cross and he hung, bled, and died. And he hung, bled, and died not only to save your soul, but he hung, bled, and died that on the day of remembrance that you could be covered, you could be covered in the covenant. You see, when he hung, bled, and died, the Bible let me know that Jesus said, this is the new covenant in my blood. And in order for you to walk in the covenant, you got to be covered in the blood of God, in the blood of Jesus. Not only do you have to obey, but you got to obey it all. Not only do you have to tithe, but when you tithe, do you know that Jesus calls you in the blood? And when God begins to look for them that he will pass judgment on, he's going to look at you that tithe and say you're covered in the blood. He's going to look at you that need and say you're covered in the blood. He's going to look at the devil when he try to devour you. He's going to say, oh, hold up, wait a minute. They're covered under the blood. They're in the covenant. And God said in Malachi 3 and 17, and when I see you in the covenant, I'll treat you like a favorite son. The devil might accuse you, but I'm going I'm to excuse you. And I'm going to excuse you of your sin because you're willing to tithe and to be under the blood. Come on, stand to your feet. There's some I will in your body. The I will that God said, I will cover you. I will cover you. I will keep you. I will protect you. I will heal you. I will deliver you. If you understand my word, do what I say. Be a tither. Be a giver. And watch what I will do. 